If you need help censoring your videos because maybe you or others in your videos say too many bad words like s or or maybe you don't want to alert your viewers personal assistants with those magical wake up words like or let then stay tuned and I'll show you just how easy it is to do it all in LumiFusion. Hey, it's Andre, welcome back to another LumiFusion tutorial video. If you're looking for ways to add sensors to your videos in LumiFusion, I'm gonna show you three different censoring methods to add to your videos. The three methods are the Bs, blurring, black bars, and and all three of them are really easy to do in LumiFusion. As usual, this method can be done in LumiFusion on Apple Silicon Macs, iPhones, and iPads. I'll be doing this on my Mac Mini, so let's get over to the computer and onto LumiFusion. So I've got my clip here that I've imported onto the timeline. It's me showing off the Amazon Echo Dot. Now we all know that the wait word for all Amazon products is Alexa. So in this video, there are two instances where I say the word Alexa, and I'm gonna to want to beep them out. Now what I've done is I've downloaded various lengths of the sensor beep. So all the way from 0.25 seconds to two seconds. It just depends on the length of what word I say. So if I say Alexa, then it's gonna be the length of the word Alexa. So if I just play through this video and you can just see, I've already cut out the two instances where I actually say the word Alexa. And those are the bits that I'm gonna to want to beep out. So if I just play this through all the way, this is an Amazon Echo Dot, and unlike those other assistants from Apple and Google, you activate this by saying, Alexa. <laughs> Hopefully that hasn't triggered yours off, but simple Alexa is how you trigger this. Okay, so if we stop it there. So as you can see, I've already cut the two instances. Let me just zoom in. I've cut in the two instances there and there, where I say the word Alexa. So if I just play it from there. Alexa. See, that's cut out. Alexa. And there. So we know that the beep's going to have to go into these sections here. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I need to mute the audio of me saying Alexa. So I'm going to double clip on the cut clip. And then it's already in audio. And then if you go on to the gain, and I usually just do it all the way down to the bottom, so minus 90 dB. That will mean, so when we do play it through, it should have muted or it's decreased the volume of me saying Alexa. So we just play that through. See? This by saying... So some people may just leave it there and just blank that out, but I'd like to just give that the video a little bit more by adding that beep. So I'm gonna do the same thing to the other time when I said Alexa. And if I just play that but through. Simple. So the two instances of me saying Alexa have both been muted out. So now all that we need to do is from the imported different length sensor beep files, you just need to drag the appropriate one onto the timeline, whichever fits the length of the clip. So I'm gonna try that 0 0.71 first and that actually fits nicely. So if I just do that, now I'll just play it through, see what it sounds Saying. like. Saying. And you can see that it does beep there. Now if we can see from the audio levels here, it's actually quite loud. So I may just want to decrease the volume A little bit just so that it's not so much in the red and it's not going to hurt your ears of your viewers if we do that again I'm saying that's better that should be okay so if we just go to our second instance of me saying Alexa so what I can either do is I can duplicate the clip pressing the duplicate button there and dragging that over because hopefully it should be about the same length I'm generally saying that I am saying the same word. And then you've got your audio levels that have been copied over from the first clip. So we can either duplicate the clip or we can just drag it down from the imported folders. Because we have altered the volume here, that's sort of a global setting for this audio track. 
So everything we do on this audio track will be minus eight decibels when you import it onto the timeline. This is so just run through like this up. again. And unlike those other assistants from Apple and Google, you activate this by saying. It's our first beep. Hopefully that hasn't triggered yours off. But simple. Is how and you second this. beep. And you're all done. That's how to add beeps to your videos. So in addition to the beeping, what we can also do is we can also add black bars. So if you're covering up someone who may be swearing or something like that, and it's obvious to your viewer what they're actually saying, you may want to just cover up their mouth just so you can guarantee that no one's going to either be able to hear them because you've beeped it over or be able to lip read them. So covering their mouth with a little black bar or something like that could be ideal for this situation. So let's go and add that black bar into the shot. So what we want to do is we want to add a overlay title to the timeline and because we've already cut the length of the the act of saying Alexa in this instance we can shorten the clip from whatever the original was all the way to the what the length of the actual clip section is so you just want to double click on that and make sure you're in titles so if you're in frame and fit just select titles and because we don't want the title here, we can delete that. And now you want to add a shape. And currently this is white, so we're going to change that to black, but you can choose whatever color you want. So we've got that, and then I want to decrease it. Now I'm going to want to Put it over my mouth so that no one can read my lips and know what I'm saying. Okay, maybe saying a bad word. So I'm going to want to decrease the size of the box and make sure it covers my mouth so no one can see me saying the bad word. Just going to play the clip through. That's better. Thankfully, because I'm stationary in one position, I won't have to move the box. It can just stay here for the duration of that clip length. But if you do move, you may have to introduce keyframes, which we'll talk about later when we're talking about blurring faces. Play the clip through. You can see for the entirety of the clip, my mouth is covered. So you can leave it like that, or you can just have a little bit more of a play out with play about with the shape. So if I just play that through. There we go. No one can guess that I'm saying the word Alexa. So in the next instance, we're going to add a speech bubble. So instead of the black bar that I've done there, we're going to add a speech bubble. Because sometimes you might not be saying a bad word, but you, in this instance, I'm saying the word Alexa. It's not a bad word, but it's okay for me to put in a speech bubble that I'm saying the word Alexa. So I want to add another overlay title here. Just drag that to the start of the clip. And then reduce the length of it to match the, the cutout that we've done already. Double click on that. It's going to delete that text first. Add a shape. And I'm going to go on to chat reversed. I'm going to make sure it fits. So I'm going to put that there. Now I want to add a little bit of a, a shadow just to make it stand out a little bit. So it sort of pops from the from the screen and add a an edge color once again just so it stands out it's not just a plain white against the, the video clip so that's i'm happy with that so i'm going to add again and then text double click on that and i'm going to write alexa select done and i'm going to change the color to black and then drag that, if you can, drag that into the speech bubble and just play the clip through. There we go. So just play this from here. Oh, simple. There we go. That's, so this is just a simple way just to add speech bubbles to any of your videos. It doesn't have to be for censoring, it could be for anything else. But I just thought, as well as the black bars that we've done in the first instance of me saying Alexa, 
I can also do it in the second instance. So instead of actually saying it, because it's beeped over, and you end up with something that looks like this. This is an Amazon Echo Dot, and unlike those other assistants from Apple and Google, you activate this by saying <laughs> Hopefully that hasn't triggered yours off, but simple <laughs> is how you trigger this. Sorry, I'm not sure about that. So in this clip, what we're going to be doing is going to be blurring our subject. So what we have here is a gentleman walking from the right side of the screen over to the left hand side of the screen and we found out subsequently he doesn't want his face in the shot. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to blur him out. And because he only wants his face in the shot, we're only going to censor this part of that gentleman. So what the first thing I need to do, if I zoom in a bit, is I need to find the exact moment that he first gets into the shot. So if I start from there and then make a cut there do everything onwards and then get to the point where he's out of the shot and make another cut there so this is this section here in the middle is the section that I want to be working on and because I'm essentially adding an overlay what I want to do is duplicate this clip so everything where the subject is in the shot so I want to duplicate that so I press the duplicate button there so I've got that and the part of the person that I'm going to be blurring is his face. When I say he, I mean me. <laughs> it's a picture of me walking across the screen. So what I'm going to be doing is blurring my own face. So what I need to do is crop this duplicated clip. So it's only my face. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the original clip. So we've just got the duplicated clip showing. So if I just press the I button and that will hide the original clip. So all that is on now is the duplicated clip. So I'm going to double click on that and then I need to make sure I'm in frame and fit. And then into cropping. And now I just need to crop so it's only my face. And it's personal taste how much cropping you want to do. So I'm probably going to start off with about that much. So it's just my, just my beautiful face. And I can add a bit of corner radius shaving. I can move that around. You can play about with the edge softness. But it's all user preferences. Whatever you prefer, you may not like this close of a of a radius in or this close of a crop in. So I'm happy with that. I'm just going to go back onto the timeline. So if we were to leave everything there, and as you can see, it's not, it's where we've cropped it. It's just going to be at that exact point there. So we're going to have to introduce keyframes. So the next thing we want to do on this, we want to sort of pixelate or blur this image out. So whenever this is in frame, we want it to be blurred. So we're going to do color and effects. Some people may want a Gaussian blur, sort of like that. So if I go back onto the main timeline, and if I enable the original clip, just go back to there. So you've got, it's blurred out. But what I want to do is I want to pixelate my face. I choose that one. I feel like it's a little bit sort of a modern blurring or pixelating. And the blend. So I want to do that. But it's totally up to you which one you prefer, pixelating like this or blurring. Now, as you can see now, there's a little bit of my glasses there. You can be able to tell on a lineup or something like that. There's someone, the man here, he wears glasses. So you may want to reduce that crop a little bit. So if we go back into frame and fit, go back into cropping again. And from the left hand side, you can just expand that. 
So now that we've got our ideal blurring effect, what we're going to need to do is make sure that this is tracked all the way across the screen. So whenever we're moving across the screen, it goes with it. So what we're going to need to do is create some keyframes. So what we're going to, what we need to do first is go back to the start of the clip. If you are moving this, you make sure it's in cropping and not size and position. Otherwise you'll just move this exact spot over to another one. Whereas in cropping, you move the, the effect over to the different portion of the clip. You can see wherever I drag it, it blurs out that exact spot. So what I want to do is if I just drag that to the edge and I sort of want to minimize this as much as we can. There. And then we want to add a keyframe. And then we want to skip to the next frame. So there's a little bit more of me on the show. And then what we can do is we can either go on the crop box itself and then move it, adjust it that way, or you can, which might be a little bit easier straight from the edge, you can adjust the figures that way. So once you're happy with that frame, you skip to the next one. Move this up so that it covers a bit the peak of my hat. Move that out and then move on to the next frame. So every time you make an adjustment, it just adds another keyframe. So now that is a bit further out, you can adjust it again. It'll be it'll be a lot easier when your subject is fully in frame because then you'll be able to keep the same crop box and then just follow it and track it over. You can see now that the subject is fully in the frame, so we're not having to change the dimensions of this crop box. We can just simply just move the crop box over and just follow the subject. But this has to still be done on every keyframe, but it's a lot easier to do now. So I'm just going to fast forward this a bit while I continue doing every keyframe for every section of walking that I'm doing. And now we come to the end, we have to do the reverse of what we did right at the start, which is decreasing the size of the crop box. Just to fill in those edges, which probably should have done at the start, I'm just going to decrease the edge softness and the corner radius just so that it sort of, there's no, you can't see at the, at the edges. And that's all done. So if we just play that back through all the way. Never know who that was. It's like magic, their face is censored. So this tracking, while there's no native tracking in Luma Fusion as of yet, this is the only way that you can sort of track an object, but it works for anything, whether it's people, objects, or anything, you can do it all using this method of keyframing and just following the crop or anything like that. If you've got any questions about adding or editing sensors to your own videos, pop them down in the comments below. Subscribe if you haven't and make sure to watch some more LumiFusion tutorials like this one by clicking here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.